The meeting of the Opioid Settlement Fund Committee is called to order at 3.05 on Monday, May 22nd, 2023. We have a quorum present. The agenda um, was distributed in, in the PAC. Um, and if there are any amendments to the agenda, let me know. Hearing none, we will run um, the meeting as stated in the agenda. Uh, the first thing we have on is a review of the um, application for funds. Um, from the last meeting, we had discussed um, adding the mission statement to the front of the um, paper agenda, I'm sorry, paper application rather, um, and to the landing page of the electronic version. Um, I apologize that I did not get a chance to print off the electronic version. Um, so the mission statement, um, as we voted on last time, has been added. As you can see, we took off the um, statement about the confidentiality um, of the application. Going through the application, um, we got to the definition um, where the private citizen, it had come up about, um, Yes, on page four about private citizens applying. Um, and so the monies applied for by use um, for private, uh, by private citizens are to be used for a project to benefit the entire community of Abington related to opioid use disorder, disorder prevention, harm reduction, treatment, and recovery. Um, so that is kind of the working definition we have now. Um, if anyone has any changes, we should discuss. And then on page five, we added um, the question um, to please explain how you're going to uh, measure success within the intended use of these funds. Do so using SMART objectives, which stand for SMART, Measurable, Achievable, Realistic, and Time Bound, explaining goals, overall objectives, and using specific examples. So we have any further discussion on that? All right, so I made all of these um, corrections to reflect exactly as they are here. Um, they are reflected on the electronic version as well. Um, for our next meeting, um, I will make sure that we have either printout or the tablet. I'll bring my tablet so we can connect and show it. Um, I know Rick, who's not with us today, um, had suggested some of the changes. So if everyone's okay, we will um, continue this until next time, just so Rick can take a look. Sure. Is there uh, like a limited number of characters that they can type in? Nope. Mm -hmm. I left it. So it's a <coughs> Google form. Um, and so they are set up as long paragraph answers. Um, and then um, something that Pete had suggested um, was the upload feature. And so if there is like already pre-saved thing, they can on the electronic electronic version, um, just upload already saved documents. Anything else we want to add about the application? No. All right. Moving on, uh, Brian. I know um, we had touched on this briefly last uh, meeting when you weren't here. But um, starting the discussion about town um, department needs, is there anything um, that you foresee the police department needing? Um, I guess it would be kind of in line with your idea earlier, or like one of the earlier meetings with like, you know, counseling and recovery for officers uh, for just from their daily duties of interacting with these incidents. Okay. Um, and then also, you know, if there's relevant training, we can look into that. Um, and then I mean, one, one thing I did have in mind um, is a, it's, a, it's more of a, like on the equipment side, and I don't know if it falls under the purview of all this, but it's like a, it's a device that um, the department could acquire to that would enable them to identify whatever drug they're coming in contact with. So it's like a safety thing. 
for offices to know like okay and I don't know the science behind it I don't know all the technical aspects of it but from my understanding it can pretty much identify I forget the exact exact number but it's somewhere north of like two or three hundred different drugs um, so that was something um, that I was curious about as far as this process goes. It's, I believe it's called a true narc. True narc? True narc, yeah. And I can get some information on it for next meeting if you want. Last meeting we had discussed um, just the continuing for education, outreach, social work, support of the school district, support of teachers. Um, Amy had brought up a great point of supporting teachers' voices. Um, you know, that when they're seeing stuff, they are spending the most time with students during the week. Um, and so really empowering, I think that's the best word, is empowering teachers um, to have a voice. Um, and so if we can find some education or training to truly empower the teachers to step forward and, you know, if it's a collaboration with our office, you guys, all of us together, um, really empowering them and the community partnerships. Um, Adam, is there anything to add from last time? How about for the senior center? Um, no, same. I mean, it would be more the polypharmacy. Yeah, the prescription piece and the pharmaceutical, you know, the pharmacy piece would be, that's what we're seeing, over medicating. Yeah. I just have one concern. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm not um, disparaging any of the needs of the, of the departments, but when would we be paying it versus the town putting it in their budget? See what I'm saying? Um, and again, or going to get grants or that kind of a thing, because if they can put that narcotics device in their budget, should the money be coming from us? And I'm not saying either is right or wrong or whatever, but I think that's a question we should keep in mind because um, I'm thinking this money is above and beyond what the town or any other organization can provide. And I just would want some kind of, uh, I don't know, um, reason that the town shouldn't be paying for it or they couldn't get it in the grant or something of that nature. That's all. Absolutely. Um, and I think we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that our purpose is to make um, recommendation and identifying spending priorities um, and not to make the final decisions I, as as all of oops, <laughs> got really animated there. Um, it, it, you know, together we're all going to work um, mm -hmm. and weigh and kind of see what the town needs, um, looking at all the grant opportunities um, and looking at the bigger picture. And, you know, that is what we are tasked with um, sitting on this committee. Um, and that's why we're all here. Yeah, I think my intent too was just to like start getting, start throwing some things in there as, as, as far as what we need to be able to prioritize what everybody needs, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. it's like, just to kind of get a sense of the cash coming in, the cash going out, and it's yeah. still so like it's still so green right now. It's hard to even it's hard to still picture like what yeah. this and money is going to go towards specifically, and how much it's going to be either how much more would be needed or how much is left over. Who, who knows, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. right, and and to um, Brian's earlier point, this is something that unsure if it is something that this money could even cover um, you know right now saying for you know what discussion of town needs town 
department needs or wants, it's kind of a wish list at this point of, you know, blue sky day if we had um, an unlimited amount of resources, what, what is it that we could do um, with that so that we could do our jobs to the best of our ability? And then from there, um, identify the spending priorities um, within the opioid disorder, you know, those buckets, the recovery, the prevention, the harm reduction, um, treatment. Um, but I, I, you know, of course, I, you know, and I know this just because Brian and I work together, you know, we, of course, we're always going after grants mm -hmm. um, and seeing what opportunities we have elsewhere. Um, but I think that's a great point that we can't just rely on this. So thank you. Um, any other questions or no? All right. So I think I put these out of a little out of order. So the last page um, in the packet. Thank you to Adam, <laughs> who uh, sent me a great picture of some wording for a town meeting warrant article. Um, so. This is just a very rough draft of a uh, warrant article that we could possibly uh, use so that we could um, appropriate the money the way, and I'm not even going to try to explain it, but the way that um, Andrew had explained it to us. <laughs> I'm not going to try. Um, so to see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of, and it was roughly $100,000 from free cash for the purpose of funding future opioid remediation and abatement strategies in accordance with the state subdivision agreement or take any action relative thereto. Um, and then in the picture that Adam had provided, there was also an explanation, um, which when we put the warrant up online. The town also provides to residents the explanation. Um, and so explanation, the town has received $100,000 this fiscal year to date in connection with the National Opioid Settlement. An appropriation is required to spend the funds on, a, on remediation and abatement strategies in accordance with the settlement agreement. Um, also, with that being said, um, we had mentioned before asking um, KP Law to come in um, and discuss um, kind of a multitude of things with us. I think that might be we're maybe at a point now that probably appropriate for us to invite um, someone from KP Law to join us and um, go over the wording um, of our warrant article. Um, I have in our next um, agenda item um, to speak about some spending stuff. Um, for the new items to be discussed. Um, Adam reached out about, you know, what is it that this money can be spent, exactly can be spent on versus not be spent on, um, and kind of going through the very nitty gritty of um, the rules for, for spending. And basically this will allow us to go one time in front of the warrant, across the 100,000, and then come back so we can appropriately vote on how it gets spent. Mm -hmm. Is this what a typical warrant article looks like? Yeah, it was more this or less. was yeah. borrowed from another another municipality. <laughs> <clears throat> Any questions, comments? No. No. Good. So we'll keep it as a draft. We'll see what um, KP Law has to say about it. And we'll keep it as a working draft. Are they going to come to this meeting? We'll invite them. Yeah. yeah, I'll invite them for um, one of the next upcoming meetings. Okay. All right, and then um, the next item is new items to be discussed. The only thing I had was um, inviting KP Law, which we just discussed. Um, anything else? Anyone wants to add? No. I don't think so. 
right. In uh, the last two things that are in the packet um, are the meeting minutes with the amendments that we discussed for the 10th and the 24th. I apologize. I was unable to get the minutes from last meeting done. Um, I had a very interesting phone call that sidetracked me. Um, and I was unable to get them done prior to this meeting. So if you want to take a uh, quick look at the meeting minutes from the 10th, we'll start there. I will say the 10th was not a meeting that we had recorded. Um, and so I know the notes I had from before was looking for um, who made the motions and the exact time um, we adjourned. Um, I was not, uh, I don't, I did not have notes on that, so I. which is why the uh, minutes are the way they are. Yeah. So looking at the April 10th minutes, are there any corrections or amendments? They're in the we are um, recording them. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I don't know if it's appropriate if I advise to say something. Sure. Is that okay? Okay. So I live in Abington, Mary Durano. Sorry, I'm going to ask you. Could go to the podium yeah. and state your name and address, please? <laughs> you know, we don't, we don't have a microphone uh, set up right there, so. Okay. Like this. Gladly give mine up. I'm sure. Okay. Now I have to make a long speech with all this preparation. Just name an address if you don't mind. Yes, yeah, sure. Mary Duramo, 122 Buckboard Lane, Abington. So I am, um, I am a um, parent of somebody in long-term recovery. And I have been um, in, in this whole thing for just about 20 plus years. Um, my daughter became involved in 2001. And so it's been a long, um, a long uphill climb. I'm a member of Learn to Cope. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's family peer support. Um, so I am just here to say because I did read through, you know, um, online, your agenda and everything, and um, I see that, you know, recovery is part of your, and, you know, um, is part of your agenda, and also, you know, education and, and all, and as it should be. But also, I just like to speak up for the families. There are families in this town that have been struggling for many, many years. Um, you know, spent spent their life savings, their uh, you know, four hundred one ks and everything on treatment. So um, also now we're into the second or third generation. We have I have a grandchild, and um, you know they have suffered um, trauma, and so that may be um, may be part of your um, expenditures is trauma um, support for the little ones um, in the schools or whatever, however it could be, not even through the schools. Um, you know, um, I just want to speak up for that. Um, also, you know, we have people struggling in this economy in recovery and I know my daughter, you know, doesn't make a whole lot of money and so these kids are, they want to play baseball, they want to play football, they want to play, and that all costs money. Why can't the remediation fund pay for things of that nature, you know, for the little ones? Um, 
I just want you not to forget the families. The families and uh, people in recovery and the ones that are in the second generation now that were affected by Purdue Farmers, uh, you know, misappropriation of all of their medicine, which got us into this in the first place. So that's basically what I wanted to say. Don't forget the families. Okay. Thank you. And I, I want you for, for me, that is a, very much families will not be forgotten. Oh, yep. Um, be it through a town department um, taking a lead on something or okay. working with a community group to okay. help right. um, launch a program that beautiful that we support through this effort okay. um, to make sure families aren't forgotten. Exactly. Um, you know, in in one of our on the application in one of our you know prevention re um, reduction recovery, um, you know, I we've never defined family as something as its own um, right. because family yeah, at least for that. when I thought of it family is a huge part of the recovery yeah. um, and so I've never separated it because you mm -hmm. don't have recovery without the family exactly. um, okay. and so that is where and so That's I apologize where the family is. because family okay. is you the right. family is in every step yes um, but you are the biggest supporter through recovery um, and you were impacted at every step. Every step. Um, and then right. when you get to recovery, you are the biggest support. Um, you are hurt through a lot of the process, and then you are the biggest support. Right. So you families will not be forgotten. Excellent. I just wanted to make sure you won't have to get up here and. Nope. And thank you. Thank you. Oh, we appreciate we appreciate you. Uh, Put the face on it. Thanks. Thanks, Mary. Mary. Um, and something to note when we, this is also something um, super important. When we talk about um, counseling and programming um, for support, uh, it's really important for me um, to make that definition that when I say that we're gonna get um, support into the community, um, I'm not talking general just support. Um, we know that it's trauma. Um, and so trauma-informed care um, is something that is very specific. Um, and so I take it for granted. Um, my background is nursing, as everyone knows. Um, that's something that is second nature to me when I think about things um, and when I talk about, you know, we're going to get support and, and recovery. Um, and I say crisis management and counseling and um, recovery support for police and fire, um, that is trauma-informed support, um, both for first responders and family. Um, that is my mistake that I didn't outwardly say that. Um, that is something I just inherently know in my head I want to do. So I apologize um, to, to us um, and to residents that I didn't outwardly say that. Um, because that, again, is something that I know in me is important. Um, and just my background, I know, is what I want to do. And I just, and that's what was in my head. So I just never got it out. So thank you for. Of course it was. <laughs> All right. Should we have another bucket for, that specifies, like, family support? It's in there. Yeah. Oh, it is? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. And then they can kind of explain, like if it's, you know, if they're struggling and they need money for like a Little League sign up, they can put that in there. That's where we need to go. Also, with that, the Terry and figure out what we can and can't. Yeah, it, just to have that, it, what I was going to say is to have that ready for when the law firm does come here, mm -hmm. just, they could get the okay on that. So, again, I think, and again, if I, if I misspeak, um, please correct me. The way I understand this is, once we set up, um, again, um, Melissa, it goes back to the conversation we had last time. So a, the health department, police department, veterans, um, a private group can set up, a, apply to set up a fund, um, and it can be for 
baseball scholarships for families who, or sports scholarships rather mm -hmm. for families who are struggling um, because of recovery and they can apply for funds we can say yeah like that's that's a great idea and that's what we are going to allot x amount of dollars for um, my understanding is that individuals can't apply directly to this, this. committee right. Correct. asking for money for their granddaughter grandson to play a sport but if a larger entity wants to set up a fund to then distribute for that purpose that is what our um, task is is to identify those spending um, priorities within what comes in for applications I'm sorry can you specify larger uh, community you said or a larger entity like whom so if you know um, Abington Copes or Learn to Cope uh -huh. or the Police Department or mm -hmm. the um, Council on Aging or the Health Department wants to set up a sports a dedicated sports scholarship fund okay we can apply to do so mm -hmm. Um, and if this committee agrees that that's something that we feel is important, mm -hmm. then that money would get allocated to whatever, wh whomever um, applied for it. And then families could apply to the entity, entity. that mm -hmm. had applied for that specific amount. So it's individuals aren't applying to us mm -hmm. specifically for a smaller dollar value. Uh -huh. um, bigger, larger organizations are applying for larger amounts of money to then be distributed to a smaller level. Okay, so it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't affect where the grandchild is living at. Like, let's say the father of this child is from Abington, but the grandchild lives somewhere else. If I ask for money through either Abington Copes or Learn to Cope, that applies is that what you're saying because I'm getting a little confused I think so it's okay that would have I think to be discussed right yeah, I, yeah I think it would all be that. I think it would be up to the entity that they were applying to yeah. at that point um, you know whatever their roles are right yeah. it, it's gonna all be okay what their the money that we're giving out is going to be for Abington resources mm -hmm. so okay. Abington copes the police department, the mm -hmm. Council on Aging. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think for that entity to benefit the most from this, they would like their their mission would be to distribute to Abington within residents. Abington mm -hmm. residents. Each town is getting money, so it's not mm -hmm. like Abington's mm -hmm. the only one. Right. Yes, but but since it, like the grandchildren may live somewhere else, that's why I'm thinking. Is that something we have to determine once we decide mm -hmm. yeah. which organizations we need to? Clearly understand where the money goes. That, and that entity would have to report to this board of, as far as what they did with the money, mm -hmm. and then what? if it's if it's somehow shown that it's sent somewhere else, then so then the families will have to go to that particular town and ask for the money. Then I think it would have to deter. I What's, I'm sorry, like. I think if the grandchild was living in another town and they were looking for a scholarship to play sports in another town, mm -hmm. they then they would go to the town in which they were trying to play the okay. sport in. Because okay. I think ultimately, it, I don't know if it would come back to us, but maybe that, well, maybe it would come back to us, but they'd have to show a check paid out to Abington Little League, right? Hopefully. Something like that, but for but in my grandchild, for example, he lives in, in a different town, then yeah. I would have to, or his mom would have to go and request mm -hmm. something from the other town how do is there a listing of all the towns and the names of the coalition or it's, a, it's every town every, so, every town every town money. got um so i would have to go online or people well, would have to, to sign up for it it's online yeah. it's, it's online, online for different towns by town, by town. By town. okay and i just wanted lindsay if you could mm -hmm. clarify that again an individual cannot apply but an entity can apply so an entity yep so the way this the function of the Opioid Settlement Fund Committee for Abington is that we are, we're tasked with sorting through, my understanding <laughs> is that we were tasked with sorting through um, applications and providing um, priorities and recommendations for spending um, for groups who apply or 
if it's a single re if it's a it is a single resident but who with a mission or project that will benefit the entire town um, individuals can't apply for an individual need it's for a community need that will benefit the community yes I think we were in the middle of trying to approve the minutes of I believe you are correct and I'll move to approve them all right do we have a second? I second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. All right. So the minutes for April 10th will be filed as presented. Looking at the Monday, April 24th minutes, um, the corrections that we um, had brought up at the last meeting have been made. You guys want to take a peek at them? Let's see if there's anything I missed. Are there any corrections or amendments to the minutes? Move to approve as presented. Is there a second? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. The minutes for April 24th will be filed as presented. All right. Our next meeting is scheduled for June 12th at 3 p.m. keeping with our reg uh, regular um, schedule sorry I can't um, unless there's any objection um, that's when we will meet if there are no objections we will adjourn the meeting move to adjourn second all in favor Aye. Aye. all right meeting adjourned at 338